So I hope I said it clearly in the introduction there, the cost of lockdown. Many people are still in denial, but you're not one of those, uh, Lord Sumption. So do you want to tell us what those impacts and the effect is? Well, the National Audit Office last July uh, gave us a fairly up-to-date estimate of the costs of the uh, lockdown. They put it the cost to government at £376 billion. Now, that's a, an enormous sum. It's by far the base, biggest contributor uh, to our current financial crisis. Now, it's fair to say that some part of that £376 billion would have been incurred even if we hadn't locked people down. About a quarter of it, a bit less than a quarter, is, has been spent, for example, on pro improving health services. But the greater part would have, been, would, would have been avoided if we hadn't locked people down. This is uh, an example, it's the most dramatic example, of what Rishi Sunak, in an interview in The Spectator a few weeks ago, uh, pointed out was the complete failure of the government uh, even to consider the collateral costs of lockdown before making the decision. There never was a cost-benefit analysis, in spite of voices like Sunak's own, uh, which sought to point out that you really can't embark on a radical experiment with human life like this without actually working out the consequences. Lord Sumption, I, I'd like to ask you about the what I consider to be the sort of the failure of the law in some respects to protect our freedoms during those t times of lockdown. You know, we, we have the Human Rights Act, which is supposed to protect our freedoms, supposed to protect the rights of family life and all of these things, and it it seemed to fall flat on its face during the COVID lockdown. Why, why was that? Why are our freedoms not better protected? Well, there are really two different points that would have arisen if, on any, in any litigation. Actually, they did arise when a businessman called Dolan actually brought a case before the courts. One is um, whether it was a sensible thing to do uh, when you look at the balance of factors. I don't think there was ever the slightest prospect, even in an age of human rights, uh, that the courts were going to take over the government's function in measuring that. The really critical issue was whether the government had the power to do these things at all without any effective parliamentary supervision. Uh, my view is that they did not. They should have used an Emergency Powers Act called the Civil Contingencies Act, which would enabled Parliament to control uh, the basis on which this was continuing uh, and how long it was continuing and on what terms. Uh, they didn't do that and the courts, uh, I think, uh, shamefully failed to intervene to make them. Other countries' courts did intervene. The Spanish courts famously said, you can't do something as serious as this without using emergency powers that give uh, the parliament the right uh, to supervise at every stage. Uh, our courts did not do the same. The French courts uh, intervened repeatedly. They had a fast-track process uh, to knock down any excessive measures taken by the government, which they used several times. The German courts stood up for the right of protest. Ours did not. Uh, the deafening silence of the uh, human rights lobby in the face of this uh, really is um, quite remarkable.